is Alea Leyland, and I am here to share with you that conversation absolutely matters. We are going to join me and Chet Snow in an interview about the upcoming 2012. Join us. So we are here with Chet Snow, and we've wandered all over the hotel trying to find a spot to film. Aloha. Aloha. <laughs> <laughs> we won't even discuss which hotel. Yeah, really. <laughs> no, we probably shouldn't do that. <laughs> I, can, I, I can say, though, that if Waikaloa means gentle breeze, today is certainly more than gentle. More like gale force. Gale force, yes. <laughs> what was it you told me that uh, people here call it Waikabloa? Waikabloa, right. yeah. And so. we actually call it that often. But uh -huh. usually down here, it's not so bad. It's right. usually up. Right. You know, up on the hill. Right, right. But today, hmm, it's pretty good. <laughs> anyway, it's like month of March in like a lion and oh, out yes. like a lamb. Here we are yeah. in March. And why did you come now? And you have plans. You have things that yes. you're doing. And I really want to pick your brain up because you're you're like a behind the scenes sort of guy. <laughs> you are. You've done like all these different things, but. Every time I try to steer you toward mass dreams of the future, you go, yeah, 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 that was that. <laughs> well, that's all right. Actually, probably that's a place to start, though. And, yeah. Uh, people may recognize me still from that, although after 20 years, sometimes I wonder if anybody ever has read it or still knows about it. But, uh, I did write a book called Mass Dreams of the Future, which yes. was published uh, by McGraw-Hill in 1989, which was another year of great change, as I think we all know. And it's based on the concept that was pioneered by Dr. Helen Wambach, who was my teacher and a psychologist working in the field of reincarnation. The idea that we can not only know past lives that we may have had in a chronological past, linear time-wise, right. but because the unconscious doesn't think linearly, it thinks in a non-local way, uh, as physics would say, uh, quantumly, we can also pick up a cues or clues as to future lives. Right. And so the premise was that we took um, many hundreds of people, I don't remember how many, but in, in workshops that ranged anywhere from uh, 20 people to 250 people at a time, uh, Dr. Wambach was still conducting them uh, before she passed away in the mid-80s. And then I was conducting them, and a couple of other psychologists and researchers around the country were doing it too. Not only in the United States, but I also did them in France, and in uh, Argentina, and in a couple of other countries, Canada, I believe, to see what people would pick up about uh, the future. What What is our mastery about the future? Well, wow, when you think about it, the future already is here. Yeah. From 1989, I mean, this research was done between 1980 and 1988. Um, so that's over 20 years ago. And so based on what people saw then? Well, it's very interesting. Some of the things clearly didn't happen. Some of the things have, have started to happen. And the seeds for many of the things I see is actually uh, coming into focus and beginning to be seen and to be recognized. Perhaps the most important aspect of the whole work was that the world that people saw in 21, 2200 AD, oh, 100 years from the time we were doing the research, 150 years, we, we tried to pick a time that would be beyond most people's lifespan. Because we found, I found in my psychological research that we have an internal block. Uh, the liver doesn't want to know. The liver wants to live, Dr. Wombach <laughs> always used to say, meaning that we if we go into a future time in our physical body, most of us don't want to know about entropy, about aging, about all the things that happen or might happen to us, and it perhaps impinges on free will. But if we if we jump over that and go to a next lifetime, uh, over 150 years in the future, then we can see trends. We okay. get an idea of what might be going on on the planet. And, and the biggest thing was... Earth changes, I will say quite clearly. And obviously back in the 1980s, no one talked about Earth changes. Right. Whereas today, uh, I remember so clearly that uh, I, I actually did not only the 150 years of leaps into the future, but Dr. Wambach said I have a research bump somewhere, and somehow that allowed me to go into a nearer term. 
future okay. as well. So part of the book actually is a very dramatic story of me going ahead into the late 1990s and into the 2000s, right into the period we're in now. Right. Um, now that part has partially come true, not all of it, certainly not as severe as was pro seen, projected, but earth changes um, and the weather uh, were not at all discussed back at that time. And, right. and I remember saying to Dr. Wampa, well, we still have television, but people spend a lot of time watching this channel all about the weather every day. <laughs> like, wow, what do we have? Yeah. And, and, and I said, there's another channel that goes into nothing but repetitive news. And it goes on and on and on and just talks news. And then again, in CNN 83 or 4, none of that existed. Yeah, yeah. You know? Um, now, since probably something I don't watch very much, I didn't pick up on the thing about the Hollywood Gossip Channel. <laughs> but we do have that as well. That's yeah. part of our current future. Yeah. But the, the, the Earth changes and what was called the lighting of the Ring of Fire, yes. which means the Pacific and the activity in the Pacific, the volcanic activity, the earthquake activity, uh, that. And then the other big thing was that um, in the United States, we would have at least one president, much younger than Reagan, who was the president then, who would have big ears and who would get us into a lot of trouble. <laughs> and, uh, uh, yeah. Yes, <laughs> we had as a president who had big ears and got us into a lot of trouble. Absolutely. And so it's kind of, and I think I remember saying, oh yeah, he was a governor or something, and not somebody, anybody would have thought would be president until suddenly it happened. And, and it, all of that came Absolutely, true. yeah. All yeah. of that has come true. Now, uh, I did foresee in that time that things would be worse. I think we've talked about this personally. I do feel that in around 1992, 93, I see it as with Hurricane Andrew that took place in Florida in 92. We were given a breathing spell. Right. Something changed in the, let's say, the world, the zeitgeist or consciousness or, or, or play yes. of things. And that lasted up about 10 years. Right. And since then, we're back on track to some extent. But that 10-year break has allowed an awful lot of people to get up to speed. And right. that's what I see now coming up because, you said, yes, I'm a man with a mission um, out here in Hawaii with a mission, and Hawaii is part of this. We're right here in the middle of the Ring of Fire, yes. uh, kind of like the central point of that Ring of Fire to some Hawaii extent. Hawaii is often called the belly button of the planet. That's it, the, yeah. the, the navel of yeah. the planet. And uh, we have the tallest mountain here that you go from the bottom of the ocean up, Juan Peops, right on this island. Um, whether or not you think these are simply myths and legends or you want to personalize them or you believe in such things, there, there is that whole concept of Pele, the fire goddess, and she Absolutely. is living here very Absolutely. clearly and alive. And, you know, uh, we just had an earthquake yesterday in, in the yeah, big island, a small one. met some of her descendants. <laughs> and some of her descendants are yeah. part of the sea. So, one of the big issues that came up in the Mass Dreams book, but wasn't really talked about a lot, simply because it was so far away, was Jose Arguelles is looking back into the Mayan codexes and finding out the Mayan calendar business. Right. And the Mayan calendar that points us toward a changeover point of 2012. Well, now we're in 2010, so people are talking about it. That's how human, human nature, you know, back in 1986 and 7, not very many people did. It took a visionary like uh, Mr. Arguelles to do that. And um, I picked up on that, though. I remember reading the book, very powerful book. I remember I was in, living in France at the time and uh, actually took a small group of people and we did uh, that, the ceremonies on that day with around the world ceremonies that took place on that right. day in right. August of 1987 to set that 25 year period um, that some uh, people have called it a nanosecond of time, uh, of choice time, of time that we can make choices, that we can influence the future. And, and I do believe that we have been influencing it actually positively. Yes. In the general consensus uh, of mass consciousness has changed for the better. I think that there's more right than there is wrong. Exactly. Yes, there's plenty of absolutely. wrong, and of course CNN and the news media all focus on the wrong all the time, and we see all the genocides, and we see all the terrible things, and we see all the oil cartels, and blah, 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 blah. We don't need to go into that on this right, show. Right, really, because it's kind our of the focus opposite. is the opposite. Yes, our focus is the but, 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 and, and this I do feel, it's important to have your feet enough on the ground that you recognize that that is happening. Yes. You can't just be goody-two-shoes and feel, oh, it's all going to 
take place in a wonderful way and we're all going to be somehow you, lifted up into the sky. And, right, you know, but you can. You know, I think you can look at it as no matter what is going on right now, it's all in perfect order. It and that the outcome order. is going to be good. Yes, I agree. Yeah. And, and that's why I say more good than bad, more things are happening. And now that we're like on a wave, Mm -hmm. And all surfers know it's it's when you get back to that crest and curl. You can't be at the top, otherwise you crash over with the wave. You have exactly. to get inside the wave, exactly. and that's where Hawaii is. Yes, Hawaii is. is inside the Ring of Fire wave. Yes. And it was about let's see, my book came out 20 years ago. I've done more research since then. It's confirmed pretty much. Like I told you that we went through this 10 year. I call it a grace period, mm -hmm. a period perhaps to, to reach critical mass, to get more consciousness uh, elevated and more understanding of what's going on on the planet uh, through more people. Right. That definitely in my mind has occurred and is still occurring. Um, and now, now, as we're coming toward this 2012 point, I've taken another very hard look. And to me, it's important to understand that the focal point of 2012, in my opinion, isn't going to be the December 21st solstice. Because by that time, it's basically going to be done. <laughs> it's over. It's either you pass or you crash. Exactly. You know, and, and uh, we crashed before, but this time we have an opportunity again to pass. I think many of us, many of your viewers and listeners, have come here into this time to assist that passage. Absolutely. I and, think you're right. And therefore, what we have seen is that actually these next two years are going to be very crucial for that whole process. There will be lots of testing going on, but at the same time, I think we can all keep our head above water. And to me, the Mayans were most interested, and they chose for their calendar, really, it is based on astronomical um, positioning of planets and the solar system and the galaxy, very, very physically based and yet metaphysical at the same time. For me, the key time in 2012 isn't 21st of December, it is June 6th. And that is because Venus will do its transit across the Sun, bringing the energy of the Sun, which of course is the life giver of our part of the cosmos, into our physical universe and the Earth and our bodies. We wouldn't be here without the Sun. If the Sun were to go out eight minutes later, everything here would freeze to death. Absolutely. Immediately. And, and, you know, like the back to that. Okay, so if we understand that, the physical form requires the sun. And when Venus crosses the sun, here's where Hawaii gets involved, because what is Hawaii? Hawaii is aloha. And aloha uh -huh. is love coming from shared breath. Okay. Because when Venus crosses the sun, the sun's breath passes through Venus to reach us. That's uh -huh. what it means. And guess where the Venus transit will be visible from? It'll be visible from the Ring of Fire area, essentially from Hawaii over to Japan, north to Alaska, south to Australia. So the South, the south Pacific? Yes, and actually up to Alaska. Okay. So in America, in, in the United States, there are two areas that it would be visible from. Probably from Juneau, Alaska, and also from Hawaii. Well, gee, I, I know where I'm going to be. Well, there you go. <laughs> so our, our feeling, our goal, and this is what we have come out, my wife and I have come out to meet with some of the Native Hawaiian elders, the Kukunas and the Kukunas, uh, on several islands mm -hmm. to discuss bringing some of the other wisdom keepers from around the globe mm -hmm. and the interested public, those that are ready to make a choice for Aloha, mm -hmm. to the home of Aloha at the time when Aloha will be being drawn, brought by the sun through Venus to us. And that is that June 6th, the first week of June of 2000. So now is it a, just a few hours or is it several days? The actual it? transit is about six to eight hours long, it's about six hours, okay. because Venus is quite small compared to the Sun, and it's not like an eclipse, which is a few minutes, and then it's over with, and, but the energy, just like an eclipse, probably predates the actual passage and postdates the actual passage by several days. Okay, so what is that time frame? We see the time frame is about the 1st of June to probably the 9th or 10th of June. Oh, so it's, it's about 10 days? About 10 days. I think that the, that's yes. when the Aloha energy has an opportunity to reach us with the power of the sun. Okay, so what 
I, I know that there's a, there's a, an event that is planned here yes. in that time, yes. and that people will probably be able to tune in from yes. all over the world. Yes, within the next six months, we hope to have it set up, organized, uh, begun, and, and uh, we will know what elders are coming. Uh, where we are creating actually in our area of Sedona, Arizona, uh, a society called Four Directions Wisdom that will. Already we had a first gathering in 2007, mm -hmm. because there are two Venus transits actually. The first one was earlier, it was about 2004. Right. That was the year that we invited Jose Arguelles and John Major Jenkins and several others of the theorists of 2012 to come together to tell our audience about that and about 2012 as, as the beginning. Right. Then in 2007, more or less the midpoint, we invited a small number of native elders to come to Arizona not because there was a trance to be visible, simply but because on the continent of the United States, Arizona, and particularly Sedona, Arizona, had, and the Four Corners area, the Hopi lands, are among the most ancient spiritual centers of native knowledge, native wisdom, uh, on our continent, on Turtle Island. Okay. Okay. And, and so we brought them, and, and one of the uh, elders was a Kukuna from uh, Hawaii, whose name is uh, Antikua. Yes. Uh, she's from Maui. She's been voted as a national treasure there. Uh, it's quite an amazing woman, and and so she will be part of our work down here naturally. Now, before you finish telling us that, I have a question in there. There will be people, obviously. We're not going to get everybody to come to Hawaii, although we're going to. And not everyone is internet savvy. No. So what? Just like for the harmonic convergence, there was a, a, a focus that people could have in order to benefit the most yes. from that event. So what kind of focus should people have to benefit the most from this particular Venus transit? Well, again, the focus is aloha. Okay. Aloha, and again I come back to what I said, it is the love coming forth with the power of breath and the sharing of coming through the power of the sun, bringing us from the power of the sun. Venus to the Mayans, by the way, was a warrior god, as much like Athena. Uh -huh. Yes, because Venus, if you read Velikovsky and some of the other uh, very scientific and yet quite controversial theorists, Venus may not always have been in her current place in our solar system. Venus may at one time have caused quite a bit of havoc uh, here in the Earth and in ancient civilizations, and so the Mayans knew that. And they looked at Venus as a, a planet that had to be modified, much as the ancient Hawaiians were uh, uh, involved with Pele and the volcanic goddesses and, goddesses and had to modify those. And, and, you know, it's not like uh, we've gone, I think we've gone an octave above that. Right. So we don't need that harmonic of human sacrifice or right. that kind of thing or blood. This, is, this was the old one. Right. The new way will be to bring people together to focus wherever they are, not just here in Hawaii, exactly. but to focus on what is aloha and sharing of breath, perhaps sharing of food or drink. Uh, these are very important things to ground us in the physical, but yet to take us to the stars exactly. at the same time. So, so we become, in a sense, the rainbow bridge. Nice. So this is building the rainbow bridge, and I truly believe that we are opening then a portal, a gateway, on that time, on that day, with the ceremonies that the elders will bring us, that people can do in their own communities, just like the harmonic convergence. I mean, it changed my life, and I was doing it on a beach in southern France with about 12 other people. Right. You know? <laughs> I was at a waterfall in, in uh, Snoqualmie Pass, Washington. And there you are, and yeah. yet you remember that time, oh, that absolutely. moment, that day. Absolutely. And, and now, with the with the possibilities of streaming video, it may be that we can even um, have some links that can be done. I think we will be able to. I think, and so I think it will be coming through this channel. It could well come through this channel. I would yeah. love to have it come through this channel. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and then, as we do that, and those that can come to Hawaii, because obviously the closer you are to the center, the more of the spirit you receive. Exactly. We know that's true. Oh, absolutely. And, and I don't just say that from any desire to have everybody suddenly show up here. Well, Hawaii couldn't handle Enough. millions of people <laughs> all showing up at once, too. But, but those who have that feeling in their heart and who know that they need to participate, uh, we will find the way. Absolutely. They will find the way absolutely. for this to happen. So what we're looking at, and it's still very much in the planning stage, Aloha, Alea, so, so don't pin me down on details oh, because you know they may change. 
And you know what? You are planning this farther ahead than anyone has ever made any plans in Hawaii. <laughs> well, <laughs> because you know this is kind of like the oh, and yes. such and such a thing is happening. Let's do that. And and it's the day before, so this is really this is bigger. Yeah. And look at Jose Arguelles. His book came out a year or two before uh, exactly. the the harmonic converges because he knew that it was going to involve the whole planet. It's not just about Hawaii. Hawaii is simply the central point. Mauna Kea. Exactly. The, the, the mono uh, of Kilauea, the activity of the earth here. Yes. And that's why we're on the big island mm -hmm. instead of one of the other softer, gentler islands because it frankly might be easier to do it, obviously, in Honolulu from lots of oh, points of view. But that is not where we need to be. It's not. It's not where we need yeah. to go now. I say nothing against people in Honolulu joining in, finding the way oh, to, to do, uh, you know, go to the Pali or go to a special point. And, and those will become evident, I believe. Absolutely. As we come closer to the date, those places, we, one of the things that we've just spent a week doing here on the Big Island is, is traveling to certain key points um, because I also feel that we will have a conference with people, with uh, certain people doing not only sharing, talk story, elders coming from other parts of the world. We will have hopefully some important uh, speakers that people want to hear who have something to say and about the gateway and about what we do from then on. Absolutely. And you know, because 2012 is not the end, it's the beginning. It's the beginning. This Absolutely. is opening the portal. Yes. And that's what I see. I see this, the rainbow portal, the rainbow bridge, opening that portal. Um, so we have been going around the island with some of the native kapunas looking at places that would be appropriate for smaller gatherings on the actual day of the transit. The actual day is a Wednesday. Okay. So a lot of people perhaps couldn't get involved to do something that whole day. But we want to have something on the weekend right before. Mm -hmm. And then perhaps have a day or two to enjoy Hawaii. Yes. See some wonderful things here. Perhaps swim with the dolphins. But when we do these ceremonies, we want to split it up into at least four to five places because the land itself isn't set up for huge crowds. No, it isn't. And we're not here to destroy the land. Exactly. We're here to help empower and embellish and give aloha back exactly. to this planet and to this land. And so that's why we will no doubt take some elders to four or five spots with, with just 50 or 60 people at each one and choosing them at places that can handle the energy of those people. Absolutely. Obviously, people coming in and going out under the idea that you, you know, you, whatever you bring in, you bring, you take out. Exactly. And you take more out because, in fact, you're also helping to replenish. That's Absolutely. our purpose. Absolutely. Uh, so all of that is, is part of what we're setting up. We know we'll be coming back to Hawaii between now and then. Well, let's hope so. Several, several times. <laughs> no, it's going to have to happen. Yeah. Uh, our base is in Sedona, in yes. Arizona, which again is a powerful center for now, all of this. Your website for this event and for the transit is what? Well, right now the website is chetsnow.com, but if they go there today, nothing is up yet. But that's fine, but because yeah, we'll if start they go there, there, there will be, even yes, after a like six months from yes. the time we're doing this interview, I, there will be a link that takes them to the information about this event. Exactly. So they can keep track. There will be. Absolutely. Oh, this is fabulous. Yes, and we hope to build a mailing list uh, that way and have yeah. it on several bulletin boards, of course, by the time we reach. Because we are looking for a critical mass to open this portal. Mm -hmm. And that mass is made of human consciousness and of our, as they say, our thinned and feathered and four-legged consciousnesses that will cooperate with us in this. And one of the most extraordinary things that's happened to us out here was when we were on Maui and we were about to meet with Antipua and some of the others, we were at a place that we were, we saw a whale breach just after giving birth. Oh one of the humpback gosh. whales, all the way out of the water and then back into the water and then the baby was there. It was so extraordinary. Oh and we were not in the water, we were, oh I don't know, right on the shoreline when this, and it couldn't have been more than 300 yards. This, is, a, this yards. is truly a magical place. You know, and, and we know that that was our sign about to give birth to something new, uh -huh. to bring that energy from the land of Aloha. And at the same time, 2012 connects us to the galactic center, mm -hmm. which is what the Mayans knew. 
and it will connect us if we open the gateway in the right way through Aloha. That's what we want. That's what will take us into the future, not of the brave new world, but of the love of loving new world. Right. The world that all you have to do is be there and allow, and so everything works. Yes. One of cooperation yeah. and one of mass consciousness, not one of separation and of individual just being consciousness. Yeah. That's yeah. what our purpose is. And I even see that now, you know, even we're two years out, but I can see that more and more happening. And I actually feel it in myself. Yes, I think I we're all I feel myself there. being less uh, tense, less concerned, yeah. more, you know, things happen and I look at them and I go, God, a year ago this would just turn me on my ear. <laughs> and, and then I look at it and go, eh, it's okay. Look at this interview, how things have happened on this time of our coming out here. We had not a place to be, and yet here we have found an extraordinary spot, a beautiful spot, that we could be together and share aloha. Absolutely. Even though Waika Bloa is doing its job out there. <laughs> Grabbing the walls, if you guys see a little bump up, that's yeah. what that is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but at the same time, yeah, and everything... Everything like that has fallen into place as we have been here, and so this to us is also a sign that uh, I know a friend who said, well, you know, you have a choice. It can be difficult or easy. Let's choose easy. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm for choosing easy. <laughs> <laughs> Make it happen. Yeah, and, and you know, then you're actually not even making it happen, you're letting it happen. And letting it exactly. Yeah, that because it will, it. if you just get out of the way, it will happen. Right. Uh, but sometimes it's a little hard to get yeah. Well, because we're used to controlling things and, you know, you know orchestrating you know, and all that you stuff. You got it. You got it. And, well, that's, that's how it's worked for a long time. And yeah. so there will be some of these. Yeah, and it's a learning. It's a learning curve. It is all a learning curve. So if you were going to give our viewers a something to take away with them that will take them from whenever they see this until June... 2012. Yes. What would you give them? I suppose that what I would say to them is get in touch with nature. Start reading the signs around you wherever you are, wherever you're seeing this, because there isn't any one spot. This is a unified planet. We have one Earth, we have one solar system. Uh, our solar system is already in alignment with the galactic center because that's a process that's many years uh, uh, on either side in 2012. So those energies are already there. Start tapping in. Do uh, some daily meditation work. Start to open your consciousness. And then, if you feel called to come to Hawaii in June of 2012, we'll also start saving your pennies doing the things you need to do physically to get yourself here. Because, you know, hey, it is still going to cost money, of course. It is still going to require, bringing elders is going to require money too. We, we will be looking, we're setting up a, a, a 301k a foundation to, to make this happen because we know that this will be of great educational value. Mm -hmm. We very much look forward to the elders teaching. The elders are telling us, and we, we heard this in 2007, and we know it's even more true today, that now is the time to start hearing the knowledge that was being kept hidden. Kuna means secret or right. hidden or invisible that now will become visible as we reach this. And this has been foretold by the Gosh Alliance calendars goes back thousands of years. And it's a 5,000 year cycle. It's a huge long cycle. Right. So uh, as we as we come toward the crest of that wave, find your place in the pearl. Okay. Where that is. Get your surfboard ready. Because it's <laughs> going to be a great way. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Chad. <laughs> All right. What a great interview. Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that is Chet Snow. And you'll be hearing more from him. Stay tuned to Conversation Matters. And for now, aloha. You have been listening to LWT TV. Look who's talking vision. This is Alea Leyland. 
and we have just heard a special report with Chet Snow regarding 2012 and the fabulous event that is coming to the Big Island of Hawaii in June of 2012. Stay tuned. <laughs>